Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless them and forgive us and forgive them and guide us and guide them ameen ya rabbil alameen The questioner said I'm having difficulty leaving on uh, leaving off some major sins that I don't want to mention because I'm so embarrassed but know that they are very bad, meaning I'm aware that they're very bad. I know Allah Azza wa Jal forgives, but I don't know how to make Toba. Also, I leave off the sins and return back to them weeks or months later. My heart hurts every time I commit the sins, but I don't seem to change. Every time, well, I don't seem to change every time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the affairs easy for us and them and forgive us and them and guide us in them. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. As far as Toba, Ahabitifillah, we've talked about this uh, many times and it's a reminder to us all. Uh, but we'll go with what Imam Manoli said with regards to Toba in general, so that way this highlights and emphasizes for us, and hopefully can be uh, give us give us guidance about the importance of Toba and what Toba, how to make uh, Toba. Uh, Imam Anawi said, "Qal al ulama." He said that the ulama said, "A Toba to wajibun a wajibatun min kulli them, fa in kanat al maasiyatu bain al abdi wa bain Allahi Taala la tataallaku bi haq al haq adni." He said uh, that Toba is an obligation for every sin. Uh, the, and this is what the scholars say. And he said, and if the sin is in relation to uh, what a person, you know, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it relates to uh, what is between the individual and, the, and their Lord alone, then there are three conditions. If it relates to uh, somebody else's right, then there's a fourth condition, and we'll talk about them as brief as we can. He said the first is an yaqla'a an al ma'asi. The first thing is to, to, to stop making the sin. Wathani an yandama ala fi'liha. And the second is to feel sadness about, the, about doing that sin. So you should not rejoice in you know, the person whose heart is becoming harder and harder with those sins then they, they don't feel anything when they commit the sin. They commit zina, they commit fornication, they get up and they don't even feel sadness. وَثَالِثْ أَنْ يَعْزَمَ أَنْ لَا يَعُودَ إِلَيْهَا أَبَدًا And the third is that they are determined to never return to that sin. So these are the conditions of Toba in general. The conditions of repentance. First, is that you leave off the sin. So for example, the person who smokes weed and they have difficulty leaving smoking weed, then they have to stop. The first thing they do is they put it out and then they, uh, and, and along with that, the second condition is that they should feel sh shame about this. This should not be something they're proud and they're smoking with other people going to the lounge and smoking weed and what have you, but they should feel shame. They should feel like, subhanAllah, I, I, I gotta get off this. I gotta leave this. this, it hurts my heart. So they should feel some sadness uh, about doing that sin. And the third condition for making repentance is that they determine themselves to not return back to that sin. What's important for us here, for us to, to look at, and related to our, our uh, the individual who wrote me the question, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and guide them, ameen, ya rabbil alameen, is that the azima, this determination to not return to that sin, does not mean that you may not fall into that sin again. But the point being is that you have a real determination to leave the sin. And in the law, it sounds like the individual does have this determination because they leave it sometimes for weeks or months. But then due to weakness, due to the environment, due to not dealing with the root cause that 
forces them or encourages them to indulge in that sin that they return back to that sin and from experience and from uh, studies one thing what happens as they say the lone wolf is prey to the sheep or the the lone sheep is prey to the wolves so that being alone is one thing that can be dangerous for certain individuals certain people who do certain sins like uh, of course pornography masturbation uh, possibly doing drugs and stuff a lot of times these sins of course these sins some of them they do exclusively alone we hope uh, and so sometimes by trying to be in good company and good companionship this is going to lessen your window of opportunity to do those sins obviously you can't have someone with you at all times but this will help to reduce those times that you're tested with those sins uh, another thing is that putting restrictions on yourself to encourage you as well if your is issue as I said was pornography or something like this then putting restrictions on your internet use in time limit the places you use it uh, and and using programs that can uh, restrict what you watch um, so taking legitimate steps is very important another issue that arises why people have difficulty in leaving these sins uh, is also that sometimes when we become sad and we're alone then it, it's you feel a type of hopelessness instead of going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we should turn ourselves in into dua and supplication we see that a quick fix and a quick remedy for us is that we go into that sin that we're accustomed to that it's it's an escape because a lot of those sins are escapes they're escapes when you do drugs and alcohol those are escapes when you have um, a boyfriend or a girlfriend this is an escape this is someone maybe they understand you or, or whatever they make you feel good when you feel sad so this is dip you must replace try your best to replace that with that which is halal that which is lawful that will help you to distance yourself from those sins uh, along with that if the sin relates to uh, the rights of other people then you should the fourth um, condition for repentance is that you return the uh, the right to them so for example if you stole something from someone took something unlawfully that you return it to them if you were backbiting someone or you uh, you know it had to do with uh, something with ill speaking ill about them then you should seek their pardon and seek their uh, if, you, if you are able to do so that this uh, is how you return that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of our sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with uh, this toba uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us uh, return to Allah you know repent to Allah all, all of you all of you repent to Allah uh, you, you believers Allah is addressing the believers repent to Allah O believers in order that you will be successful you will be successful if you repent and make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will aid you in making that easy if you come to him sincerely so it's very important we want practical knowledge I know because most of us know this we've heard this we read this you can read all of this in English uh, in, in the translation of uh, Riyadh Salihin what's practical is striving to remove yourself from those environments striving to replace the sinful thing with that which is lawful increase your good deeds uh, and Put your legitimate trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove yourself from that sin. It's already a good sign that you feel sadness about that sin. At least you feel sadness. But, and you feel that it crumbles. All the good efforts. When you have weeks or months 
away from that sin, you do feel relieved. You do feel lighter. And that light is crushed and crumbled when you fall into that one sin. Because you feel that that whole momentum is now you went back. You went back after all of that beautiful momentum. It's like when you go through Ramadan and you're fasting. You feel good. You feel your iman, especially if you're engaging and benefiting in Ramadan. After Ramadan, certain sins that you may return to because now you've gotten lazy in what you watch and lazy in what you do and lazy in who you associate with, then you fall into those sins again. And it seems like it, you didn't benefit anything from that Ramadan as if it destroyed everything good. So that's why it's important to make use of that momentum. Strive and change your environment. Strive to uh, replace the sin with that which is lawful. A lawful, if your sin has to do with uh, looking at unlawful, then start to look at that which is lawful more. Increase your, your goodness. Uh, if your sin has to do with you are, I think it was a kleptomaniac, the person who's addicted to stealing, then you need to replace that stealing uh, with something with something else if you can strive your best that's all you can do is to is uh, fear law as much as you can strive and that legitimate striving a last point I want to make is when it comes to the azima the determination to leave the sin what we find especially with sins that have to do with addiction that a lot of times people don't really have the determination to leave. And I speaking to a brother recently, he was talking about, he's a, a counselor for, and may Allah bless him and raise him, I mean, he's a counselor in drug and alcohol addiction. He was telling me about a lot of his Muslim clients that he has, because he mainly deals with non-Muslim in the school system and so forth, but he's dealing and seeing with a, a lot of Muslim youth from everywhere, Muslim, migrant brothers and sisters coming from uh, various backgrounds in dealing with their issues and he was just telling me about some of some of the issues and some of the addictions and again when you're dealing with addiction this is a whole nother level if you're addicted to drugs and uh, substance abuse if you're addicted to pornography even these things they have an effect on your brain they affect how you see the opposite sex how you see uh, people because you're looking at some of the worst things and then now you're portraying it in your uh, your daily life so these things, it takes a real willpower. So the ultimate thing that I can say to an individual who suffers from these, these types of sins and returning to these sins is that you have to have, eventually, you have to make a true decision about leaving that sin. Because sometimes we do, but we still don't take all the necessary. You might leave it for a few weeks, but you really haven't taken the full steps to totally leave and distance yourself. And speaking from personal experience and many brothers that I know that when we embraced Islam we didn't really know about the seriousness of a lot of those sins and the information wasn't out like it is now and so I know many individuals who used to for us a lot of the most difficult things for some it was substance but mostly it was women it was uh, the opposite sex so at Karma uh, Allah some of the brothers what they would do because they still had Iman they might fall into major sin have a girlfriend stay at the night at a female's house whatever the case may be they would even get up and make ghusl or whatever and make rakatain and pray so they had still Iman there was a wrestling between Iman and uh, uh, and, 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 and sin and Iman eventually won for a lot of those individuals because they eventually became to a point they said, hey, my Islam means more to me. Although it was a struggle. They, it was step by step. It wasn't overnight. It wasn't just once. But it was several uh, uh, steps that those individuals had to take in order to get to where they are today for those who were able to leave those sins. And it depends on the individual but the point being is that you have to have real determination you have to make a personal decision no one else can really make that decision or take give you a secret pill or a secret shortcut there is none 
because it's going to come down to your taqwa and you eventually making that decision or whatever or replacing it with that which is halal to destroy your uh, desire to return to that sin because there's a desire sins are attractive the Prophet ﷺ said that the that Jinnah is surrounded by those things that uh, you you dislike and the hellfire is surrounded by those things that you that you like that are appealing to you they are surrounded by those things that are appealing to you so you're going to be inclined towards those sins but you're going to have to fight and that is jihad and nafs that is the personal jihad where you're fighting and striving with the sword of the sunnah and the sword of iman and the sword of uh, of, of taqwa to fight and decapitate that uh, those sins and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us all to remove ourselves and distance ourselves from sin and to put between us and our sins uh, a wall of, of Iman to defend ourselves against the sin in Ma'asi Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and may Allah bless us all with a class with that and may Allah comfort our hearts on Iman Allahumma inni uh, inni a'udhu bika min ilm la yanfa ومن قلب لا يخشى ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا لا يستجاب لها O oh Allah we seek refuge in you from from knowledge which is not beneficial from a heart that doesn't fear you from our desires that are not fulfilled and from uh, supplication which is not accepted. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.